everyone. I'm starting an exciting project today that I have been waiting to try, but I needed two of my Haworthia to flower at the same time. So I've been waiting. Um, this one, my Haworthia Bayeri, has been flowering for the last week or so. You can see on the bottom that the first ones, because they flower from the bottom to the top, the first ones have all dried up. So I will not be able to use those for hand pollination, but the ones in the middle have opened within the last few days. So I should be able to use those. This is what they look like when they are open and ready for pollination. Uh, typically for the male plants, you can use them as soon as they open, but for the female plants or the ones where you're going to use, you know, the ovaries, try to get the seeds from those ones you want to have open for a couple days. So this one, since it just opened, this one is my, um, Haworthia retusa, uh, hybrid. So it's mixed with the Mulgani and I really like this one too, but this one just opened. So I'm going to need to use that one as the male and I'm going to use the Bayeri as the, the female plant, at least in this first attempt, uh, since I'm only going to get probably a couple tries or opportunities to try because, they're not flowering at the exact same time. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is take the petals off of both of the plants or both of the flowers that I want to be using. Um, it's yeah, easiest to kind of grab the side and pull it off either with your hand or with tweezers, whatever's easier, but you will need a small tool. Tweezers works well for me. Um, especially when you're grabbing the, the stamens, so the parts of the plants that you need to actually pollinate the other one with. So I'm just pulling them off. It's easiest if you grab the petals that are the outermost petals and kind of work your way in. And this is what the male plant looks like. So those immature anthers, you're not gonna wanna use those ones yet. You're gonna wanna use these ones because these are the ones that have the good pollen on them. Um, so find those mature anthers, and those will be the ones that you'll be using. So this one, I'm going to do the same thing. Just pull off the flower petals. No need for those. And here. Oop. I sped that up a little. Um, so yeah, getting these flower petals off. And then I'll show you the inside of this one. I'm also going to pull off the, uh, the anthers on this one. So we have a better shot of getting right at the female parts of the plant uh, with nothing in the way. So I'll show you what that looks like once I get these off. So that's what I'm pulling off. They are really small, so um, you may also need a magnifying glass to see them. It might be easier to do. Uh, I feel like I can see them well enough. But you want to be careful that you don't, you know, accidentally damage the plant while you're doing that. So I'll show you better close up here. Um, so that big green part, that's the ovary of the plant, the pistil of the plant, and then the stigma on top. And that's where you want to be rubbing the mature anthers on. The stigma kind of all around the pistil, but especially right on the top. And in some cases, hopefully, you will see kind of it start to open at the top. And you'll have a better chance of getting pollination if you do that. So I just pulled off one of those mature anthers and I'm going to do you know, just that. Just pull it along the top, kind of try to get the pollen everywhere. You can also try to rub the anther. I, I can, I sometimes do it on the side of my hand or you could do it on a paper towel just so you can see the pollen and then rub the pollen directly on to the plant if that works for you. And here actually, this is a couple days later now and I wanted to try again and I thought I'd put the camera in a way where you could see it maybe a little bit better. So same thing here, pulling the petals off just using my hands here because it's a little bit easier sometimes. So yeah, just getting those off. That way you can access the inside 
of the plant. Um, you do also want to isolate the plants that you're working with so you know what you pollinated it with, especially if you have a number of Horthia. I only have two flowering uh, right now, so I know what it will be uh, cross-pollinated with, so I don't really have to worry about that. And you're going to want to get it out of the sun and in like a cooler place to give it the best shot of pollinating. So just getting these off here and then we'll get started. Okay, pulling off that last petal there. And I think this is a better view of what it will look like when you're working with them. So you can see all the parts of the plant there um, and you can see that there are mature anthers that are ready to use, full of pollen which is nice, um, again, giving you a better chance at getting a seed pod and some seeds. So here we go, I pulled off one of those and same thing, just trying to rub it on the, that white top on the ovary all the way at the top there and trying to get the pollen to transfer. Sometimes you'll be able to see it, and if you can see it on the top, then you probably don't need to use another anther. You wanna make sure it stays there. If you continuously use the anthers, you might knock off the pollen that's on top. So if you can see it there, um, that one's good, and yeah, you can move on and hope for the best. And I'm just gonna to continue to do that with the other ones. And now, since the flowers on my uh, newest flowering one have been open for a few days, I can also use the anthers from one on the other so I can kind of use them both as uh, a female plants and give them both the opportunity to be pollinated. All right, and then you wait a few days <laughs> and see which of the ovaries are still intact. You'll see it stay a dark green color if they are pollinated. So hopefully I'll be able to show you examples of that. And about five days later, you can see if you had success, that one at the bottom, you could see it all dried up, did not take these two right here uh, did. So these are seed pods. You can see the darker green color. They're rounded at the top um, and they're still there. So if you have anything that's still there and it's green, it's probably a seed pod. They can range in size. You can see the one further up is a little bit larger than the one on the bottom. But either way, um, we've got two seed pods. And here we are a couple days later. So you can see that the seeds pod the seed pods are getting bigger um, and what I'm gonna want to do I mean this still is a, at least a few more days until they open but I'm gonna want to put a piece of tape uh, clear tape just around it with the top open so that way it can still get air but if it bursts when I'm not looking which is what's going to happen uh, that way the seeds don't fly everywhere so we had two successful examples of pollination here and these two seed pots which I am really excited about. Subscribe to us.